Stormy3, who's a patron on the Discord server. Uh, Stormy asks, anytime... Oh, sorry, not Stormy3. It's a Stormy... Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a cat emoji or something, colon three. Well, anyway. Uh, anytime I try to arm my drone, it says CPU overload. I tried to flash Betaflight 450 instead of 451. It says fail to open USB. Is there any fix for this? Okay, Stormy, you have, you have at least two problems, maybe more. <laughs> maybe more than two problems, but at least two problems. CPU overload means that your CPU cycles, or your CPU is overloaded. So it means that the you're asking the CPU to do too many things and it can't do them all. Uh, for perspective, let me just plug in, you may hear a USB sound real quick from my computer. That's me at my computer, not yours, sorry. It's kind of rude to live stream USB sounds, you know, but uh, there you go. Um, so if I go and I connect to this flight controller, blah, 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 here at the bottom of the screen, you should see CPU load 31%, okay? That is how hard the microprocessor on this flight controller is working. And when that reaches 100%, it can't do any more work, and that, of course, is bad. But we don't want to see that number too high. Um, because there's always a little bit of spikes and dips, and so you always want a little headroom. Um, I don't know exactly which percent it triggers the CPU overload uh, warning, but basically the flight controller is telling you that your CPU load is too high for, that to, for, for safe flying. Hello? There you go. And it doesn't think you should be allowed to arm. So how do you address that? Well, one thing you do is you go to the configuration tab, and here where we have the... The gyro update frequency and the PID loop frequency. Now, in later versions of Betaflight, the gyro update is fixed. It is locked to the the uh, n native rate of your gyro, and you can't change it. And then the PID loop, though, you can reduce. And if you look at my CPU load, oh, you can't see it at the bottom, but take my word for it. It's at 31% right now. If I go down to 4 kilohertz and save and reboot, now... It's a little hard for you to see. It's at 17%. So that number went down pretty substantially. And it makes sense if I cut the, 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 the PID rate in half, the CPU load is doing half as much work. So the first thing I would recommend you do is you go to the configuration tab and you lower your PID loop frequency. The number one place where this happens is if you've got like, um, which is the slow F4 processor? It's the F411. F4 yeah, I always want it to be the F405 because that's a lower number, but confusingly, the F405 is faster than the F411. So if you've got an F411 processor, and then you go and you put your PID loop at 8K, and then you enable resource-intensive things like RPM filtering, all of that stuff will increase your CPU load, and the way you fix it is you reduce your PID loop frequency, okay? On some boards, you may even need to take the PID loop frequency down as low as 2K. You shouldn't need to go below 2K on any modern flight controller. So that should get rid of your CPU load. But, ah, you have another problem. You flashed it, and it says failed to open USB. And that probably means you flashed the wrong target, and now you've sort of soft-bricked the board. So most likely, you went to update firmware, and you selected a, a board here from the list, and you selected the wrong one. Like, for example, if I type Maytech in the search box, there's a ton of different Maytech targets, okay? And you flashed, like, maybe you flashed Maytech F411, but it should have been Maytech F411 SE. I don't know. I'm just making this example up. The best case scenario would be for you to have a CLI dump from before you bricked it, because that will show what the target is. Otherwise, you're going to have to be doing some Googling to figure out what the correct target is. But what you will do is you will unplug your flight controller. You will find the bootloader button. And it's a little hard for you to see on my tiny, tiny screen, but on this flight controller, here's the bootloader button. It's not even near the USB port. That's kind of backwards. It's usually right next to the USB port. You'll hold down the bootloader button and plug in USB. And then I want you to look over here. Right, right here, okay? If I hold down that bootloader button and plug in USB, <sighs> screw you. Do it, do it, come on. I'm holding down the wrong button. <sighs> the frick. What the frick? 
I'm holding the bootloader button down. Don't make a liar of me, you son of a bitch. There we go. Yay! You'll get DFU. And that means that you're good to flash this. You can reflash the flight controller, and then I'm guessing that will fix your problem with not being able to connect to USB because you'll flash the correct target, whatever that turns out to be. Um, anything to add, Blunty? Sometimes I overlook things that you find obvious in, in a troubleshoot like this. So uh, I'll give you the chance that, to chime in. Just that if you feel... Uh... I mean, there's two things to think. One is that you can just lower the pitlip frequency and nobody will ever know the difference. D-Shot 150 and 2K will fly just the same to everyone. Pretty uh, much. However, if you feel like you need to go higher, you can overclock your F-411, which is something that happens some, to some of the board's stock to make them support uh, that 4K D-Shot 300 or higher. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you can also turn other features off, which you kind of mentioned. But just so you know, sometimes it could be like, uh, you know, the GPS or some kind of other feature may be on, and that could be causing the issue. Yeah, valid. Of course, you probably want that feature if you've got it. Uh, so, but yeah, good, valid. Um, I want to uh, jump to this reply by Mark, Mark FPV22, who says, My speedy BF405 can only support 3.2 kilohertz with the current settings. Mark, the reason for that is that you have a Bosch gyro. I don't remember the exact model number. The Bosch gyro's native rate is 3.2 kilohertz. Um, and you might be thinking, wait, the ICM gyros that we normally use are eight kilohertz as their native rate. Isn't uh, that isn't isn't more better? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. Without getting into a ton of like technical data. Uh, Chris Rosser did a comparison video about these different gyros. I'll see if I can find it, but but hold on. Um, the Bosch gyro running at 3.2K has just as good or maybe even a little better performance than the ICM gyros running at 8K. And the reason why is that the ICM gyros run at 8K and then they give you sort of a more raw feed of the data that then has to be filtered. And that filtering sort of adds... It, it adds latency and so forth. Whereas the Bosch gyro runs at 3.2K, but internally it's already doing that filtering. So the net result is that you get just as good and useful data out of the Bosch gyro as you do out of the ICM gyro. It's just that Betaflight for a while didn't take into account the fact that the Bosch gyro was already doing some of the filtering. And so the Bosch gyro would give you the data and then Betaflight would do additional filtering that wasn't really necessary. And as a result, the Bosch gyro didn't quite give as good a performance. Again, who would notice during flight? Hard to say. Um, and today with Betaflight 4.3, at least 4.4 and 4.5, maybe 4.3, the fact that the Bosch gyro only runs at 3.2K is not actually affecting your flight performance compared to an ICM gyro running at 8K. At least that's the argument. Now, it's only going to run D-Shot 300 instead of D-Shot 600 because of that slower PID loop rate. And again, the reason for that is that if our PID loop is running, you, you can only update the motors once every PID loop. The way it works is the PID loop calculates all the calculations it needs to do, and based on the output of the PID loop, it tells the motors, here is the new value that you need to have. You need to speed up, you need to slow down. And until the PID loop finishes its next calculation, there is nothing else to tell the motors. The motors are just going to keep doing what they were told to do, because we don't know what they need to do next until we finish calculating the PID loop. That's what the PID loop is doing. So the idea is that if the PID loop is running at this speed, there's no point doing a D-shot that runs at twice that speed because you'll, you'll, you'll send the new output to the motor and then you'll just be sitting there. So the beta flight devs argue that you should run the slowest D-shot that you can that still fits within the PID loop timing because those lower frequency D-shot signals are more resilient to noise. Interestingly, so that's why when you have a slower PID loop rate, D-Shot 600 gets locked out. It's because the, the data flight devs would argue there's no point to that. Interestingly, the KISS, I say KISS, I don't know exactly who it is. Uh, maybe it's um, Alexander, uh, the KISS Ultra dev. I, I, can't, I can't put a name on this. Um, but a someone from the KISS slash FETTECH world has made the argument that faster D-Shot is desirable. They go all the way up to D-Shot 2400, which is four times faster and smaller signal than, or smaller packet than D-Shot 600. Um, 
I'm just doing 24 divided by 4 is 6. I don't know if there's some technical reason that's not true. And their argument is that by minimizing the latency to the motors, you're reducing the latency of the control loop, and therefore the motors, you, you, as soon as the PID loop calculates the new value for the motors, you don't want to wait to transmit a big, slow D-Shot 300 packet, and now the motors know what their new value is. You want to transmit a fast packet, and as soon as that packet finishes the transmission, the motors have their new value. They want to minimize that latency and argue that faster D-Shot does matter, even though the PID loop isn't running that fast. Who's right? I don't know. I can present you with the arguments, but I don't really have a, an answer for you there. But that's why they do it that way. The counter argument is that that D-Shot 2400 packet is going to get corrupted more quickly by electrical noise than a D-Shot 600 packet. The counter counter argument is I can transmit four of those D-Shot 2400 packets in the time of transmit one D-Shot 600. So even if one of them got corrupted, I could just retransmit it and keep going. I don't know. Anyway, Betaflight doesn't mess with D-Shot 2400 or anything like that. There you go. Woo! That was a meaty question. I took like 10 minutes answering that one question, but it's the kind of technical stuff I really like to get my teeth into, so I hope you enjoyed it.